Second Chances of the Soul by 55 Artists. Chapter 5, The Invasion Part 2. Tony and the rest of the Avengers once again found themselves around the table on the helicarrier, this time with the additions of Loki and Rhodey. Tony had called him in to help. Loki stood next to a pacing Thor, while Bruce stood in the corner next to Tony and Rhodey. And Natasha and Steve sat at the table. The Avengers watched more monologue in his cell through the security screen. Be grateful for your meaningless lives when I'll be graced with the presence of a child of Thanos. I, Ebony Moore, will do you the favour of ruling your hopeless race. He really grows on you, doesn't he? Bruce asked sarcastically. We need to figure out what his play is. Does anyone have any information on who he is and who this Thanos character is? Bruce asked. Thanos is a madman. He seeks to gather all the Infinity Stones and use them to wipe out half of the universe. Loki replied, totally noticing that he was shivering a bit, probably at the thought of Thanos. Infinity Stones? Rhodey asked, furrowing his brow. The six elemental crystals of the universe. Each Infinity Stone controls an essential aspect of the universe. The Space Stone is contained in the Tesseract, and the Mind Stone is contained inside that scepter. Thor responded. Tony noticed Loki open his mouth to try to add to Thor's information, so he decided to be annoying a bit Loki to it. He has an army called the Chutari. I assume he wants to use them to take control of the Earth, so, be, so it'll be easier for Thanos to gain control of the Infinity Stones on Earth. Loki glared at Tony, obviously upset that he had spoken over him. And how exactly do you know that, Stark? I wasn't aware that you've ever even been to space. So how do you possess such an extensive knowledge about Moore's plans? Tony glared back at him. Seriously, Rando Games. I'm a genius, Tony replied. That still doesn't explain how Loki began. Natasha cut Loki off. As much as I'd enjoy watching this pissing contest, we have more important things we need to accomplish right now. Tony nodded appreciatively in Natasha's direction. So he's got an army. From outer space? Steve seemed exasperated. Morn needs the Iridium to open a portal, Bruce stated. A stabilising agent, both Tony and Loki stated at the same time. They glared at each other once again, then stuttered over each other, both trying to speak over the other. Loki eventually won the Testeron bat battle, much to Tony's dis dismay. The portal is in the Pegasus lab collapsed onto itself due to its instability. With a proper stabilising agent, it will hold itself together. And allow the Chutari through, Loki said, smirking at Tony. That little... God, that sly greasy head twit is going to be the death of me. Excuse me, Brucey Bear and I are the science bros here. So you have no right to buck in with inadequate explanations of important scientific processes. Tony replied haughtily. Reindeer Games here forgot to mention that Moore would have to heat the cube to 100 and... 20 million Kelvin just to break through the Colombum barrier. At least, unless Selvig has figured out how to stabilise the quantum tunnelling effect. If he did that, he'd be able to achieve heavy, heavy eyes on fusion that any reactor on the planet. Tony continued, obviously in an effort to show his superiority in knowledge. I only admitted that information because I didn't feel it necessary to say to laymen. Some people know how to cater to others and can properly summarise information rather than simply recite research. Tony repl Lo Loki replied, glowering at Tony. Tony just ignored Loki and pointed to the Gallagher guy. Hey, you! Yeah, you playing Gallagher? Aren't you an agent? Word of advice, you got to learn how to be more discreet. We all notice you over there. You're not a secret hide your agent, right? The guy looked up from his game for a second and shook his head. He then continued to play the game, ignoring Tony's pointed look at the guy. Gotta say, I admire a guy who can be so nonchalant during a potential global threat. If you ever want a different job, like perhaps one of Stark Industries, you're hired, Tony said. Is everything a joke to you? Steve asked Tony angrily. We need to focus on the task at hand. Tony bit his tongue to prevent himself from making a snarky comment back at Steve. He really didn't want to start out on the wrong foot with Steve again. Despite their differences, Steve had become family to him, and he'd trust Steve with his life if it came down to it. Yeah, sorry, Capsicle. Tony replied, forcing out an apology. What I want to know. 
the Fury said as he walked in. It's how Moore managed to turn some of the sharpest people I know into his own personal flying monkeys. Monkeys, I don't believe I understand. Thor answered with a confused frown. I do. Steve declared proudly. I understood that reference. Tony walked over to Steve and patted him on the shoulder condescendingly. We're all very proud of you, old man. Tony replied sarcastically. Steve looked back at him, slightly miffed. So much for starting out on the right foot this time. After the Avengers finished discussing Moore's plan, Tony and Natasha both pulled aside by Loki. The three of them stared at each other calculatingly for a few seconds, not saying a word. Finally, Tony broke the silence. So, time travel. It's a funny thing, isn't it? What is he doing here? Loki asked Natasha, pointing at Tony with a look of disgust. I deduced that the realm of the soul had somehow sent the daughter of Thanos and I back to the past. I was unsure whether or not you had come back until you showed up at the lab with him. But he wasn't even in the soul realm. Well, for your information, Reindeer Games, I horrific, heroically sacrificed myself for the sake of the universe and brought everyone back to life. I ended up on the vo orange vomit planet afterwards. Tony responded in a boastful manner. Natasha stepped between them probably trying to prevent a full-blown fight. There are more important things going on right now that take precedent over this petty cat fight. So please, do me a favour and try to be civil. Tony and Loki grunted in agreement, reluctantly. Tony recounted the events that had occurred since they had come back in time, with the help of Natasha. He and Natasha listened to Loki's lengthy tale. I had come back during Thor's coronation day, and after the past version of me had let the frost giants in. My idiot brother declared war on them once again, and broke the fragile truce between us guardians and the frost giants. I convinced my father to banish him to Earth because my hot-tempered brother needed to learn some humility. Unfortunately, the broken truce meant unsteady grounds for when it came to the frost giants. My father never fell into Odin's sleep because I never confronted him about my frost parent heritage. He did a horrible job trying to com compromise with the Frost Giants, and they retaliated by coming to Earth to end Thor's life. Thor was a sacrificial idiot, becoming worthy of that horrible hammer of his again. I stabbed Laufe with through the heart, and we killed the rest of the Frost Giants together. Loki sighed before continuing. After that ordeal, I sought out Thanos in an attempt to con contact Gamora. By the time I came across him, I discovered that both Gamora and her sister were no longer with Thanos. I'd also gotten word that Thanos is sent more to retrieve the Tesseract, which is when I came to Pegasus with Thor. Tony looked at Natasha, and both remained silent for a moment, taking in the new information. Tony once again broke the silence. So, somehow the Soul Stone sent us all back. But what about Vision? He doesn't even exist yet. I am afraid I do not know what will become of Vision. Perhaps when he is created in this timeline, he will remember the past. Time magic is very complicated and dangerous to meddle with. We must proceed with caution in the future, as our changes have already caused some uncertainties, Loki responded. Tony scratched his beard thoughtfully. So what? We just let everything happen the way, the same way it did last time? I hate to break it to your reindeer games, but we've already changed things. In fact, the person who caused the most significant and potentially detrimental change was you. At least if you were invading Earth again, we'd be able to predict what happens. Moore is a wild card. So if anything, all of our problems are your fault. It will excuse me for not wanting to be mind controlled again by that maniac. Loki snapped back. Tony opened his mouth to retort, when suddenly the unmistakable roar of the Hulk erupted. The helicarrier then shook as an explosion occurred. God damn it, Clint! Natasha exclaimed. Natasha wished Tony luck, as once again he left to go and help Steve fix the engine. This time around, Rhodey tagged along to help. Meanwhile, Natasha and Loki attempted to help Thor contain the hog. Banner! Try to think! We are not the enemy! Thor screamed as he whacked Hulk in the face with Mjolnir. This had the opposite of the desired effect, as the Hulk seemed to grow angrier and punched Thor in the face, launching him across the room. Thor, stop hitting him! You're just making him angrier! Let me try something really quick! Natasha said, as much as she loved Thor, the Norse god was extremely tactless sometimes. What exactly are you going to do? 
Sing him a lullaby. Loki said sarcastically. Yes, actually I am. Natasha bent down slowly and reached her hand out. Hey, big guy. Sun's getting real low. Natasha sang soothingly. The lullaby appeared to work as the Hulk turned towards Natasha and began reaching his hand out towards her. That is by far the worst lullaby I have ever heard. Does that even count as one? Loki asked in disbelief. Roar! The Hulk angrily punched a hole in the ground. Hulk love lullaby! He screamed, the Hulk marching towards a whimpering Loki. I was only joking! Only joking! Loki wheezed out nervously. Loki's pleas did not seem to do anything to stop the Hulk's anger. The Hulk picked Loki up by the leg and body slammed him repeatedly before tossing Loki into a wall. If the situation wasn't so dire, Natasha probably would have laughed. After doing his best to wipe away his tears and collect himself, Loki picked himself back up again. Seriously? Again? I'm on the right side this time! Ah, oh, God, you big fat green oaf! Loki screamed. Puny God. Lo the Hulk muttered angrily as he punched another hole in the wall. Nice going, Loki, Natasha said sarcastically. At that moment, the sound of the Iron Man suit thrusters filled the room, accompanied by a loud clang with the soup. Wait, let me help you! An unexpected voice of a child came out of the suit. Wait, that voice was very familiar. Peter? Natasha asked incredulously. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, hey, Nat. Peter replied with a nervous chuckle. I just wanted to help the dad. The Hulk crashed into Peter's suit, pinning him to the ground. Peter! Natasha cried. Hey, dude. Uh, you like knock knock jokes? Uh, let's try one. Knock knock. Peter wheezed out from beneath the weight of the suit. Roar! The Hulk angrily punched the suit. I'll take that as a who's there. Peter responded nervously. Surprisingly, the Hulk began to laugh. Metal boy, you so funny! The Hulk screamed in delight. As the Hulk continued to laugh, he slowly turned back into Bruce. You have a lot of explaining to do. Natasha crossed her arms and looked at Peter pointedly. Natasha and Loki teamed up to knock out Clint. This time around, there wasn't really much of a fight. While Loki distracted Clint by creating multiple illusions of herself, Natasha came up from behind and whacked Clint on the head. Hard. The, t the two made their way over to where Moore was already being held, only to find he had already escaped from his cell and was in possession of the scepter once again. Natasha looked at the scene in front of her, absolutely horrified. Coulson was in trouble. You like this? Coulson asked sarcastically as he pointed the weapon at Moore. We started working on a prototype a few months ago. Even I don't know what it does, Coulson said menacingly. Your powers are inconsequential compared to mine. I will end your life in an instance. Moore replied, raising the scepter. No! Natasha screamed as she and Loki came running to Coulson's aid. Hang on, Mr. Agent! I got you! Peter exclaimed. Peter flew over to Coulson and picked him up, bringing him out of arm's way. Pete, I thought I told you to stay low with Bruce! And Natasha scolded. Honestly, the kid was worse at following directions than Cooper, and he was the handful. I'm sorry, Jarvis told me you guys were in trouble over here, and I just wanted to make sure everyone was all right. Peter replied as he flew off Coulson in tow. Once again, it seemed to go as though Moore had used the commotion to his advantage, escaping while everyone else was distracted. Shit! Natasha cursed under her breath after she noticed that Moore had disappeared. We're going, doing a great job fixing everything, aren't we? After the commotion was over, Tony and the rest of the Avengers once again gathered at the table in the helicarrier. This time there was the addition of Peter, wearing one of Tony's Iron Man suits. His face plate was open, and he, rather than looking traumatised, he looked excited. Of course, Peter would find an alien invasion thrilling. This was the same kid who chased bank robbers in his free time, at least in the previous timeline. Upon noticing Tony's shocked face, Peter carefully stepped out of the suit and cowered in front of Tony. Kid, what the hell are you doing here? Tony asked in a scolding tone. Tony and the Avengers watched as a very apologetic Peter explained how he had snuck on board and helped take down the Hulk and save Coulson. Tony took a deep breath, 
trying to calm down. It would be best to avoid an outburst similar to the one that had occurred a few years ago during the ferry incident. The kid had good instincts after all. He didn't have a single bad bone in his body. But he needed the kid to understand what he had done was dangerous. He hoped that he could teach Peter some sense of self-preservation this time around. Although Tony could admit that he wasn't exactly setting a great example. You did good, kid. I want you to know that. I'm really proud that you stepped up and did what you could. Tony sighed as he ran his hand through his beard. But kid, th it isn't your job. What you did, sneaking onto this ship, that was dangerous. You shouldn't be here. You could have gotten yourself seriously hurt or even killed. I don't know what I'd do if something happened to you, kiddo. Tony lectured gently. If something happened to you again. I'm sorry, Peter whispered softly. He bowed his head, looking so guilty, but so cute. Those puppy eyes are making it so hard for Tony to be mad at Peter. Tony realised that Peter definitely hadn't meant to worry him. And hell, maybe he hadn't realised how much he meant to Tony. That needed to change. While Tony had been terrible at being accessible to the kid the first time around, and had rejected any kind of affection, it would be different this time. This time the kid would know he was loved. Tony couldn't help himself. He wrapped his arms around the kid. Peter seemed surprised by the display of affection, but accepted the hug happily nonetheless. This was the first hug that Tony had shared with Peter in the current timeline, and it felt so satisfying to finally embrace his kid. Natasha cooed as she teasingly said, Ah, Tony's dog really does have a heart. Who knew? She walked over to Peter and ruffled his hair. By the way, Pete, that thing you pulled off with a Hulk took guts. You're made to be a hero, kid. Rody nodded, his head in agreement with Natasha and high-fired Peter. Jeez, I swear you are becoming more like Tony every day. Um, sorry, am I the only one who didn't know that Tony had a son? Bruce asked. Steve also looked in on in confusion, seemingly having the same question. Oh, I'm not his, Peter began. Pete here is my personal intern and protege, and he's my kid. So if anyone has a problem with him, you have a problem with me. Capiche? Tony asked threateningly. Well, I think that Star's son will make a fine warrior one day. Perhaps all this is over. He can join us in celebration with rebels. Thor declared loudly. Well, brother, before any celebrations occur, perhaps we should focus on the problem that needs to be solved. We need to get to New York. Moore is most likely there already setting up the Chitauri attack. Loki said. And how exactly do you know that Moore is headed to New York? Fury asked. It was just a guess. The location makes the most sense. If it were me, I'd want a monument built to the sky with a name plastered on top. Plus, he needs a power source. Loki answered. Well, you're not the one planning the invasion, are you? I'm not sending you all out to New York on a hunch. Banner, have you made any progress on dragging the cube? Fury asked urgently. Yeah, actually, it's just processing the information. Bruce walked over to the screen and took off his glasses. It says the cube is located in Tennessee. In a second, we should have a more exact location. Aha! The cube is currently in Rose Hill, Tennessee. Tony nearly choked on the blueberry he had just popped into his mouth. Rose Hill, Tennessee? The city where Harley is from? Why is he? Why there? Tony saw Loki and Natasha share a confused look. Tony took the opportunity to make fun of Loki for predicting the wrong location of the alien invasion. But inside, he once again felt uneasy. He was sure this was just the beginning of a chain of different, unpredictable events. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that because I did. Oh, Peter being adorable, sweet, in a Iron Man suit and being an absolute MVP. Yes, just yes. All of that. Yes. Also, am I the only one who's really seeing a sibling rivalry thing going on with Loki and Tony? I think if they had grown up together, those two would have been really good friends. Or again, rivals. <laughs> and Natasha basically playing good cop and bad cop simultaneously. And all the Avengers being like, Oh, good Lord, Pete, what did you do that for? But anyway, good job, kid. That's just a standard of the MILFs for my videos, really, isn't it? <laughs>
Anyway, remember the usual stuff. Like, comment and subscribe. Blah, blah, blah. Bye, my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye.